Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up dev mode and install RetroArch on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. I'm going to be showing you a couple of little extra tips and tricks along the way, showing you all the different details you need to know. Let's jump right into this. So I will mention for today's video, I'm going to be using the most up-to-date version of RetroArch as the 14th of November. A lot of things have changed based on my previous versions. For example, with the latest version of Xbox, my files explorer no longer works. So I'm going to be showing you a couple of workarounds we can do in today's video to still set up BIOS files. Today is really going to be the ultimate install guide for RetroArch and dev mode on your Xbox Series S and your Xbox Series X. So the first thing you need to do to actually install RetroArch on your Xbox is install dev mode. It's really easy to do. However, it is not free. It costs around $20. I'll be walking through the whole process in today's video but this is an important thing to keep in mind i'm going to be showing you step by step first how to do this process and then later in the video i'll be showing you step by step how to install retroarch using this process that we set up earlier so the first thing you need to do for today's video is of course have your xbox turned on right now we're going to be starting from our dashboard and what we're going to be doing is clicking y or search on our controller in this keyboard pop-up that pops up we're going to be typing in dev kits and we're going to be scrolling up here and i'm going to be clicking on the green one right here that has the two pictures of the xboxes on top of it i'm going to be clicking get simply clicking a on our controller it's then going to say congratulations we got it and then this is going to start installing right away from this point i'm going to be clicking a to view the progress and we can see it's starting to download it's around 100 megabytes in size so it should only take a couple seconds to download once it's downloaded what i'm going to be doing is coming back to my dashboard i'm going to be coming down to my apps and games i'm going to be coming down the left i'm going to be coming to the app section and I'm going to be selecting the dev mode app that we just downloaded. I'm going to be opening this up. And here we're going to go down a process of actually creating a dev mode inside our console, which is going to allow us to install custom content and apps. So we're going to be able to install RetroArch inside our Xbox. At this point, I will also mention that when we actually put our Xbox in dev mode, it will not overwrite or delete anything from our system. So you don't have to worry about anything like that. However, you are going to need to have at least five gigabytes in the storage space. So I'd recommend to have at least 20 to 50 gigabytes for us to comfortably install RetroArch and have a little bit of wiggle room here while setting up our Xbox in dev mode. What we're going to have to do is once we get to this screen, we're going to have to click next twice until we get to the activate console section where we will then get a code and a link on screen. So what we're going to have to do from this point is come over to any desktop PC and what we're going to be doing is entering in this URL that we see right here on screen. And most likely when you first come in here, you will be asked to log into your Microsoft or Outlook account. In this case, I've already logged in here. What we're going to be doing is scrolling down here until we see the developer programs right here. And we're going to be clicking on Windows and Xbox and we're going to be clicking the get started button right here. Once this opens up, we'll be brought to the sign up page for this. And what we're going to have to do is come here to this page, come over to the right, and we're going to be clicking on the sign up link right here. Once this opens up, you are going to have to set up all your account information. Now they do ask for a couple different things here. First is your location. Then you have to choose an account type, either an individual or a company. In this case, I am an individual, so it's going to cost me around 14 euro. Or if you're a company, it's going to cost around 75 euro. This will vary depending on your location and your currency. However, it is really easy to set up here. And then all you need to do is enter all of your contact information below. I'm not going to be putting this on screen. I'm actually going to be skipping to when my account is created, but it shouldn't take too long. It's really easy to set up all this. Once all your information is entered, we're going to have to accept the terms and conditions, and then we're going to be able to click finish. And then we're going to be redirected to the registration confirmation page. From here, we can go back to our dashboard. Where we can get some more information about our account. But from this point, we're actually not going to be staying here. And we're going to be going back to the link that is found on our Xbox. Again, I'll be leaving this link in the description down below. Now, from this point here, we'll be brought to the manage Xbox one console screen. And here below this, we should see a list of all currently added Xbox consoles. So once we get to this screen, what we're going to be doing is clicking on the plus button on the right. We're going to be clicking the enter activation code button. And then this pop up will appear. Now, what we're going to need to do from this point is come back to our Xbox and we're going to be grabbing the activation code that showed up here before. Now, if you've left your Xbox idle for a while, you might get this button to get a new code. All we need to do is connect up our controller again, click A to get a new code. And we're going to be taking this code and we're going to be entering it into our web browser so that it matches up correctly. Once your code is entered, we're going to click submit. And then our code and information will be entered into the web browser. Now, if we come back to look at our Xbox, we can also see now instantly it's going to start activating and we're going to start activating this Xbox as a developer account Xbox. Now, from this point, if we come back to our Xbox, we'll see this screen right now to switch to developer mode. What we'll have is two options, switch and restart, which is going to automatically restart it as a developer account. We're going to be simply clicking switch and restart. And then this can take a bit of time while our Xbox switches and restarts into developer mode. So once your console has fully reset, you'll be brought to the dev mode UI like you see I have on screen right now. The next issue I had was for some reason I couldn't connect to Xbox Live. I think that's because I'm using a wireless connection. If you're having a wired connection, I don't think this will be an issue. So to fix this, what we need
need to do is come to our settings here on the left, come down here to launch settings. We're going to be coming to network settings and then we're going to be setting up a wireless network. So basically the dev mode version of the Xbox account is going to act like a brand new Xbox. So we basically need to set up our wireless connection again. Once your wireless network is back up, if we come to our homepage, we should see the Xbox Live is now up and running. And that is an important step. We're going to need to have that up and running before we do anything else. So the next thing we're going to be doing is upgrading the available storage in our dev mode in our Xbox Series S or Xbox Series X. This is going to be really useful if you want to play bigger games such as PS2 or Wii games or any games that require multiple files as multiple files at once can't be loaded from an external drive. To do this what we need to do is load up dev mode as we have right now. We're just going to be starting from our homepage. We're going to be clicking the start button. We're going to be coming down to manage dev storage and by default it's going to be set to 5 gigabytes. I would recommend doing it least 25 or closer to 50 depending on how much content and how many big games you try to transfer over this can determine how much you want to give here for me i'm going to put 30 gigabytes here but you can feel free to experiment whatever makes sense whatever you put here will take away from your normal retail mode so that's something to keep in mind you might want to create a good balance here now to mention the available storage here is what's currently available on your ssd not what's available on your ssd as a whole so if you go back to retail mode uninstall some games and then come back here you can feel free to update it to even more to allocate more space. So depending on what you want to do, you can experiment here. But for me, I think around 30 gigabytes will be a good starting size. Once you're happy, you simply come down one, click save. You will then have to restart for these changes to come into effect. Simply click restart. And just like that, you have upgraded the internal storage on your dev mode on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. The next thing I want to quickly mention is using external drives. So as mentioned, my files explorer is basically bricked and broken in the latest version of dev mode. You can no longer access anything on that. However, we can still use external drives to hold games and we can still access them directly using RetroArch. When connecting an external drive to your Xbox, you need to make sure to use it as media storage rather than Xbox game storage. So we can actually access this, plug it into our PC to hold games on here and access them a little bit later on Xbox using RetroArch. Now I won't be showing too much of locating games in RetroArch in this video. However, some people have had issues with RetroArch and with the latest version of dev mode. I would make sure your drive is formatted in an XFAT format. I've read this can help with some issues. So inside Windows, all you need to do is right click your drive. You can click format. And during the formatting process, just make sure to select XFAT like you can see on screen. And hopefully doing this should make your drive readable and having no issues inside RetroArch. But this is something to keep in mind. I will show this further in more detail in actual specific core videos and maybe a full dedicated video if some people need it. But this is just some extra information in regards to that. Once your device portal and dev mode is fully set up, we're going to be heading over to the RetroArch website. As always, links in the description down below. And here we're going to be downloading the latest version of RetroArch for our Xbox Series S and our Xbox Series X. To do this again, we're going to be coming to the website. We're going to be clicking on the download menu item here. And from this point, we're going to be scrolling down until we see the Xbox series slash one. And here we're going to be downloading the latest version for Xbox. We're simply going to be coming here. We're going to be clicking download. And we're also going to be needing a second installation file with this as well that we're going to be needing to attaching to our RetroArch, which is the Visual Studio Runtime Libraries file right here. We're going to be clicking this. And we're also going to be saving this as a download as well. From this point, we're going to need to load up our Xbox Series X. And we're going to need to know the IP address for the remote access on the bottom right. From this point, we're going to be opening up our web browser and we're going to be locating to the URL that we had set previously from our Xbox. I have just logged in and I'm right here right now. We're going to be coming to the home section and we're going to be coming to the My Games and Apps right here. We're going to be clicking Add and we're going to be adding a new file. The first thing we're going to have to select and install is the actual device application package. So we're going to be opening back up our files and this is going to be the RetroArch UWP right here. We're just going to be dragging and dropping this in here. We're then going to be clicking next and we can choose any dependencies. And here we're going to be selecting our Microsoft visual file. We're going to be dragging and dropping this in here. And then we're going to have both of these files set up. From this point, we simply need to click start. And then we just need to wait for the installation process, which can take a couple seconds to a minute. So we just need to be patient until this is done. Once your package is fully installed, you'll get this pop-up. We simply need to click done. And just like that, RetroArch has now been installed on our Xbox Series S and our Xbox Series X. Once you're over on your Xbox and we finally have our RetroArch installed, we're going to be coming to the app right here on the home screen. We're going to be clicking our select our menu button, the button with the two boxes here on the left of our controller. We're going to be going to view details and we're going to need to make sure our UWP is set from app. Instead, we're going to be changing this to game. And this is so we can fully utilize the full power of the GPU on the Xbox. So we need to make sure this is set to game. Once RetroArch is fully set up, we're simply going to be clicking the A button to launch it. And we're going to be opening up RetroArch for the first time. Now, when we first load this up, as mentioned, we're on the latest version at the moment. It's currently 1.9.13. And when you load up for the first time, some things are going to look a little bit weird. 
We're going to be staying on the main menu here. We're going to be clicking down to to online updater and we're going to be updating some of the things in RetroArch. The first thing we're going to be doing is updating the core info files. We simply need to click the A button to open this up. Once this is done, the text will disappear from the bottom left. We can then come down to the update assets. Again, click the A button to download this. This can take a couple of seconds again, but once this is downloaded and updated, we will see a big change in RetroArch. Just like that, RetroArch is now starting to look a little bit normal. From this point, we're going to be clicking down one more. We're going to be coming to the update controller profiles. Again, we're going to be clicking the A button to update this. You can update sheets if you want. Again, click the A button to download and update sheets. We're going to be coming down to the update databases. Again, click the A button to update the databases. Now these last two updates are optional, the overlays and slang shaders. If you don't plan to use either of these, you don't need to update them. However, if you'd like to update them, you can update them anyway. Once it's done, we're going to be clicking the B button to back out of here. We're then going to be coming over to our menu on the left, clicking on settings. We're going to be coming to video. We're going to be clicking on the full screen mode. I just want to make sure that the full screen mode is on. This is just a nice feature that will always make sure we start in full screen. We're then going to be backing out of here. We're then going to be coming down to inputs. And from this point, we're going to be scrolling down until we see our hotkeys. We're going to be clicking A to open this up. And here we're going to be looking for the menu toggle controller combo. At the moment, it's set to none. We're going to be opening this up. And here we're going to be setting the menu button combination that we can use while in game to open up the retro arch menu. So for me, I like to use down and select, but you can select up any combination here you want, whatever you can remember, but it's important. It'll be something you can remember. So when you're in game, you can easily get back to this menu. So for me, it's down and select. We're going to be clicking back out of here two more times to the main menu of our settings. We're then going to be scrolling down a little bit further and we're going to be looking for the user interface option. And this is something I do get a lot about wanting to change the UI back to the old PS3 XMB look. If you want to do this, you simply come to the user interface. We come down to menu and here you can change it between the different profiles on RetroArch. I'm going to be leaving it on Ozone as this is the default and I actually kind of like it the most. However, if you'd like to play around with the other ones, you can feel free to do that here. And you simply need to save the settings and restart RetroArch for this to come into an effect. Once all this is set up, we're going to be backing out of here. We're going to be coming back to our main menu. We're going to be coming to configuration file and we're going to be saving our current configuration, which is basically going to save all these settings that we have just set up. And just like that, we have set up the basis for RetroArch. Now, from this point, as mentioned, RetroArch has changed a bit and my files explorer no longer works when using RetroArch. That means we have no way on the Xbox to bring over extra assets, extra files and extra cores to our console, apart from using an external drive. However, it's no longer possible for us to access the files on there to bring them directly onto the internal Xbox on our system. Because of this, it makes adding BIOS files to our system a little bit more difficult. So the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting up a mapped network drive on our Windows PC so we can easily access the internal storage on our Xbox and our RetroArch, and we can sync everything to extra folders so we can really easily access them from our Windows PC. Once you're on your device portal right here, like I am right now, what we're going to be doing is coming to our left menu bar here on the left. We're going to be looking for the file explorer option. We're going to be clicking this open and here we're going to see a file explorer path that's going to allow us to link directly to the internal storage on our Xbox. What we're going to be doing from this point is coming to the top right of this screen and we're going to be clicking the browse button right here. And this is going to open up some extra information in terms of a file explorer. So what we have a couple of things here at the very top here, we have the actual path. And this is what we can enter in our Windows PC to actually be able to locate to our drive. So what we're going to be doing is simply highlighting this. I'm just going to be copying by clicking Control and C. And I'm going to be opening up a file explorer in Windows. Once this is opened up, I'm simply going to be coming here. I'm going to be clicking on the URL bar here at the top. I'm going to be pasting in the URL that we just had. I'm going to be clicking Enter. Then it's going to bring up this Windows security option right here where we basically need to enter both the username and the password that are written right here to actually be able to access this drive so simply copy these from the screen right now once you've entered both of these simply click remember my credentials if you want to you're happy with everything click oh, click ok and then you should be brought to the files and right here now we're currently inside the files of our xbox we can come inside windows apps and here we have access to the internal storage on our xbox now from this point you have access to the internal storage on your xbox we're mapped directly to it Inside the Windows Apps folder, we can actually go a little bit deeper and we can actually find our RetroArch folder, which is right here. Now you may have two that show up, but for me, it was the second one on the list. And this has currently all of my RetroArch assets. Now, if we come inside our RetroArch folder, we can actually add some extra things here. Although I will be touching on that a little bit later in today's video. The first thing I wanna do is actually set up a network mapped drive first. At the moment, we need to manually input this URL every time we want to come back to the internal storage on our Xbox. This is not ideal and it can be a little bit annoying. So instead, we're going to be mapping a drive so we can actually get here super easily. So what we're going to be doing is coming to this PC on your file explorer. It should show up here on the toolbar on the left. Once this is done, we're going to be clicking map network drive. This button here at the very top, we're going to be clicking this open. And here we're going to be mapping a network drive. So the first thing we can do is select a drive letter. Here you can select anything you want. I'm just going to be leaving it as Z for me at the moment, although you can choose anything you want. 
We're then going to be selecting a folder location. So again, we're going to be using the folder location from our Xbox. We have the option here then to reconnect at sign in and connect using different credentials. You can feel free to enable or disable any of these things if you want. I'm just going to be leaving reconnect at sign in as an option for me, but you can feel free to turn that off and connect using different credentials isn't really applicable here at the Xbox. However, you can feel free to enable it if you want. Once you have everything set up here, we're simply going to be clicking finish. And now you can see underneath this PC, we have a network drive mapped here. And if I come to this PC, you can see our new network locations right here, and it has been linked up here. Now, the only bad thing about this is every time you try to open this up when you new log in, you will have to enter the username and password again. So we do have a workaround for this. We can actually enter a command key right here that will automatically save the username and password for this. So what we're going to be doing is coming to the bottom here again. We're going to be copying and pasting this string right here. We're going to be clicking Control C to copy it. And then we're going to be opening up our command prompt. To do this, we click our Windows Start key on the bottom left. We're going to be searching for CMD. And once we search for this, our command prompt should open up right here. We're going to be left clicking to open up our command prompt. And then we should get this black screen right here. Once you open up the CMD, it'll be brought to the screen here. Now to actually paste inside here, we simply need to right click. It will automatically paste everything we have done. It will instantly grab the credentials and save them inside Windows. So now Windows will automatically add these credentials every time you try to cut this URL. So you'll no longer have to do it manually again, which is definitely a nice thing. And just like that, we have fully mapped and set up our network drive inside our PC. So now we can always come back here and add our files. So now that we have this mapped up, it makes it a lot easier to transfer files to and from RetroArch from our PC. I do just want to quickly jump in here and mention from the future that the folder structure naming from RetroArch might change a little bit. What you see in the footage on screen is slightly updated on the latest version of RetroArch. Currently in the latest version of RetroArch, it's for some reason named Platinum Fox 69 and it has RetroArch in the title. There are still two folders created and we're always going to be using the second folder on the list, at least at the current time of recording. Otherwise, I will leave a comment Comment down below to update on this. However, I will leave a screenshot on screen for the updated folder names, but for the rest of the video, it's going to be the old layout structure of the actual folder layout. Everything else is still the same. All the RetroArch files, everything else listed is still the exact same. Just the folder names in RetroArch are slightly different. So that is something to keep in mind. However, it's not quite that straightforward. The way RetroArch is actually set up inside Xbox, it's actually split up into a couple of different folders. So if we locate to the actual application here, you may see a lot of the folders we actually normally have when using My Files Explorer on the application are missing from here. So you can't actually access any save files. You can't access a lot of the normal things you'd be able to access using My Files Explorer. So what you have as an option from this point is basically to recreate a lot of the folders in here. So your save states folder, your games folder, your saves folder, your config file even if you want to and add them all inside this folder so they're always accessible from a computer so you can really easily back them up or add new files and then we need to go into RetroArch and map these applications and folders to this folder instead so RetroArch will be updated to map to this folder rather than the default folder inside RetroArch so that just means again you can easily access the files here you can transfer files without using my files explorer and you have a couple of extra options like that which makes life a little bit easier when using RetroArch and when trying to transfer files but this is really useful for the games and consoles that you need to access a lot of times when you're adding BIOS files or anything like that it will definitely save you a lot of hassle when trying to do it like that so what I'm going to be doing from this point is creating a couple of different folders some of these will be optional depending on what you want to do, but we're going to be making three or four folders here. So I'm going to be making a folder called system. I'm going to be making a folder named config. I'm going to be making a folder named games. I'm going to be making a folder named saves. And I'm also going to be making a save state folder. So here we've created a couple of more folders. We have the config folder, we have the games folder, the saves folder, the save state folder, and the system folder. And these are going to be the folders that are going to be replacing the normal ones inside RetroArch. So what we're going to be doing from this point is going back over to our Xbox in dev mode. From this point, once RetroArch is launched, we're going to be coming down one. We're going to be coming to the settings. We're then going to be coming in here and really scrolling all the way down to the bottom. And we're going to be looking for the directory option right here. We're going to be clicking A to open this up. And here we're going to be updating all of the folders that we created with the files that are necessary to that location. So one of the first thing we have were save files. We're going to be clicking A to open this up. We're going to be coming to our S drive. We're going to be coming to program files. We're then going to be coming to the Windows Apps folder. We're going to be looking for the second 1E4C folder, which is our RetroArch version right here, 1.9.10. We're going to be clicking the A button to open this up. We're then going to be coming down here to the saves folder and we're going to be clicking A to come in here and then we're going to be clicking use this directory and now we have remapped our save files to now save in the saves folder instead. The next thing we're going to be doing is coming to our save states folder. Again, we're going to be coming down to the S drive. We're going to be coming down to program files, Windows apps. 
again the second one e4c folder, come into the save states folder and click use this directory. So what you need to do is go here step by step and update all the different files. The next one we're going to be doing is the system BIOS, or in this case it's actually in the system folder. We're going to be clicking A to open this up. We're going to be coming to our S drive. Again, we're going to be coming down to program files, Windows apps, the second one E4C folder. And in this case, we're going to be using the system folder that we created. We're going to be clicking use this directory. And just like that, we have it set up. Now you can do it for the remaining files that you have. Again, as mentioned, you might not have created all of the exact same files as me. So here you need to go through step by step and choose the exact files you want to have set up. Once you have everything set up how you like, we're going to be clicking the B button to come back out of here. We're going to be coming back to our main menu. We're going to be coming to configuration file and we're going to be saving our current config. And now all of these files are going to be remapped to the new location, which means we can now really easily access them from our PC using the new mapped network drive update our system files there, our game files and anything else we want and really easily locate to them there, which is going to help save us a lot of time in the long run and will really make our RetroArch experience a lot better. Once you have your network drive fully mapped, you're basically ready to go inside RetroArch. All of the basic core information is done. From this point, if you'd like to do anything with specific cores or specific consoles, I'm going to be leaving a playlist linked in the description down below. I have a video going into detail on each one as they're slightly unique and slightly different. Some of them do look a little bit different in terms of UI as Retro Arch has changed a little bit, but most of them should be up to date. I will be updating some of my older ones that required my files explorer, for example, PlayStation 2, or anything that requires extra BIOS files in the coming days. So that should be something to check out on. So be sure to click the subscribe button to keep up to date with that. The last thing I'm going to be mentioning in today's video is actually exiting RetroArch. It's really easy. We can simply come to our main menu and quit RetroArch right here. And then the very last thing we're going to be doing is showing you how to set up safe exits, which is basically an application that allows us to safely leave dev mode without needing to worry about losing any of our extra assets. And then after that, it'll be the end of the video. So the first thing we we'll do is opening up our web browser and we're going to be coming to this link. Links is always in the description down below. And this is going to be for the safe exit application. What we're going to be doing is coming here. We're going to be clicking the download button. And we're going to be downloading these files. So I currently have my files downloaded and I have them on my desktop right here. It's safeexit.zip. What we're going to be doing is just extracting these zip files. We can just right click, extract all, select your location and click extract. Once your files are extracted, they'll be brought into a new folder. And here we'll have two things. We'll have our actual application file right here and we'll have all the necessary dependencies for our Xbox Series S and our Xbox Series X. And here we're going to be coming, of course, to our homepage again. We're going to be coming to the My Games and Apps here, the first section right here. We're going to be clicking Add, and we're going to be adding a new file. Now we need to open up our Safe Exit folder. We're going to be getting the application file, and we're going to be dragging it here as the installed package. We're going to be clicking Next. And on the next step, we can then add any dependencies. Here we're going to be adding the three dependency files that we got before. I'm simply going to be dragging them here one by one. Sadly, you can't drag and drop all of them at once. It doesn't seem to work for me at least. Once you have all of your necessary dependencies here, we're going to be clicking the start button and these files are going to install. It'll take a couple of seconds and then these files will install on our Xbox. Once this is done, we should see safe exit right here. Now, if we head back over to our Xbox, now that we're back over on our Xbox, we should see this new games and apps option right here called safe exits. So as mentioned, when you try to leave dev mode normally, you'll come here, you'll click this option and here you'll get this pop-up that is always pre-selected that will delete the side loaded games and apps. What we can do with safe exit is actually just click it. It will automatically exit dev mode without actually bringing up the pop-up at all. It will leave everything unchecked. And the next time you go back into your dev mode, everything should still be there and you don't need to worry about anything because it's all set up. Now, from this point, anytime you want to leave dev mode on your Xbox, instead of going to the leave dev mode option, we will just open up safe exit instead. And just like that, you'll leave dev mode on your Xbox without having to worry about anything. Anyway, guys, I want to take this moment to give a huge shout out to the channel members, Sean Daly, Arbor and Joshua Davis. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to have your name shout out in future videos or some other perks, be sure to click the join button or any, any video on the channel. It really helped me out. Anyway, guys, it's as easy as that to set up dev mode and RetroArch on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out the other videos on the channel. If you want to support me and show your support, dropping a super thanks in this video would be greatly appreciated. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.